Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about what the absolute best diet is for women over 50. Go grab your coffee, sit down with me, and we're gonna chat all about what I think is going to be the very best diet for all of you over 50. Let's go. Okay, so before we actually get started in this video, the title of the video, The Best Diet for Women Over 50, is a bit of a clickbaity kind of title. I mean, let's be realistic about that. Because if you've been around me long enough, you know probably a little bit about what I'm gonna say. But I think it's super important to talk about this because we see things like this out there all the time. We wanna set the record straight on, is there some things that we can be doing as women over the age of 50 um, for our diet and what are those things and how we can make the changes that we want to make. So we're going to start with that. And the very first thing out of the gate that I think needs to be said and that you need to believe is that first of all, it's never too late. It is never too late for you to make any change that you want to make, whether that's losing weight, whether that's building muscle, whether that's changing your job. It doesn't matter, it's never too late. And if you did not know this, I wrote a book called Fit at Any Age, It's Never Too Late. I wrote this book to show you that in fact it isn't too late. I share all my fitness stumbles, all the mistakes I made for so many decades and how I could still change everything around when I was in my 50s. And the subtitle, It's Never Too Late, is really what I wanna hammer home. It's never too late for you to change. And so what we're gonna talk about today, it's not too late for you to change any of that either. So let's dive in. One thing I think we all need to consider here is we all grew up in weird times, right? We, If you're in my age, you, we've seen everything. We've seen every fad known to mankind and we've probably tried all these diet fads. We've probably been there, done that. How many of you remember the fat makes you fat phase? Everything was non-fat. Fat free, carbs makes us fat. That's what we believed for so many years. We grew up thinking sugar in fruit was bad for us, that that was going to make us fat. I mean, with all of this in our heads, playing in our heads, it's no wonder we're all kind of wondering what the heck are we supposed to do? It's so confusing. And that leads us to always searching for what's the best. What's the best diet? Hence the reason why I put that little clickbaity title in, in this video. And I wanna start off by saying there is no best diet. The best diet is what you can do, what you can sustain over time. That's what the best diet is. And we're gonna talk about what comprises that best diet for each one of us because the characteristics are going to be very, very, very similar. The one thing about weight loss that I've seen over the decades is that people try to have these sexy cells. They're trying to bring you in to this advertising with nothing of substance to give you. Honestly, the way to lose weight is not a sexy cell, and that's the problem. We've seen so many products and methods out there that are trying to guarantee you that you can lose a lot of weight in a short period of time. But the bottom line here is that there's nothing sexy about losing weight after the age of 50. What works for someone who's younger than 50 is going to work for someone who's over 50. That's the bottom line. Let's take a couple things apart here. Sometimes people are diagnosed with conditions by their doctor that is gonna make losing weight a little bit harder for them. I think that happens all the time. You see people that go and get diagnosed with PCOS, for instance, or a hypothyroid, meaning your thyroid is low. You can be diagnosed with those. Those are physical condi conditions that will make losing weight harder. It doesn't mean you can't lose weight. It means that you're probably gonna have to buckle down a little bit harder. And if 
those conditions can be treated, then it's probably not gonna be quite as hard as what it would have been if they were left untreated. So the point here is that even with diagnosed conditions, you can still lose weight after the age of 50 or before the age of 50. The age is irrelevant with that. What is more relevant is the effort that you actually put into losing weight. As we get older, we often assume we can't lose weight because it's our age, because it's our metabolism, because it's menopause, or it's something. That was me for however many years, and I talk about this in my book, how I fell for that. I assumed that my lack of weight loss success was because of menopause. My metabolism has slowed all the rest, I go get the, the blood checked, everything's fine. So then I had to start taking responsibility for what I was doing. And what I think we don't understand is that over the course of decades, we have just lost handles on everything. We've lost a handle on our nutrition. Not over a year or two, but over decades of time, we're just looser with our nutrition. We're not training as much. We've lost some muscle mass a little bit here and there. You know, we're driving our kids everywhere. Our lives get put on hold in a, in a way because of our kids' lives. And we, we've just lost a grip on things gradually over time. That's why we've put on weight. Menopause and symptoms of menopause can make dealing with weight loss a little bit more challenging, but it doesn't mean that we can't lose weight. And I think the one thing that we need to believe here, super important, is that you are in control. And if there's one thing that I want you to leave here with today is that you are in control of losing weight after the age of 50. And if you're younger than that, you're still in control too. We have always been in control. We have to now take control. And let's talk about what that's gonna look like. So often when people talk to me about their nutrition, they talk about how they eat healthy and how they eat clean. And I think those are both great things to do. I believe that we put too much stock in those to the point where we ignore the, the amount of the healthy foods that we're eating and we ignore the amount of the cleaner foods that we're eating. And that's the issue. And healthy foods have calories too, make no mistake about it. I mean, a donut has calories, but you know what, an avocado has calories too. The other thing tied to all of this is that we don't keep track of the little bites and tastes and nibbles that we have throughout the course of a day. We lose sight of those very, very, very quickly, and those add up. We also maybe don't necessarily pay attention to what we're doing on the weekends as much as we did during the week. Maybe we're a little bit more aware of what we're eating during the week, but then a weekend comes and we're out running around and we're just a little loosey-goosey. And that's where so many of us, and I say us because I was that person, have gone wrong. So we need to pull in the reins. This is basically where it's gonna start for all of us. We need to tighten our nutrition up. We're going to get into a calorie deficit and you hear that term all the time. And basically you wanna eat less than your body needs because that's the only way you are gonna lose weight. So how do, how do we get into a calorie deficit? Take your goal weight, what you want to weigh. You don't have to overanalyze it, what you think you want to weigh, and multiply that by 12. That number that you get, that's the number of calories you wanna aim for every single day. Now, some days you're gonna be really great and you're gonna get really close to it, you're gonna be under it. Some days may not be great. We're not talking about perfection, we're just talking about most of the time you're hitting around that number of calories. The next thing we need you to do, eat adequate protein. And protein's a game changer. And protein is something that many of us never really thought a lot about until we've gotten older. And it's a game changer because it's gonna help maintain our muscle mass. It's gonna help us grow muscle mass. And as we get older, this is crucial. Protein is the number one macronutrient that we all need to make sure we address. Protein, take your goal weight in pounds, multiply it by one, that's pretty easy math, we all can do that. That's the amount of protein in grams that you should consume every single day. That's what you aim for. It may sound like a lot on the surface, but you need to practice that. You need to practice planning out your meals. How can I get 30 grams of protein in this, this meal I'm, I'm about to eat? How can I get 30 grams of protein at dinner? It's all about planning, learning as you go, and it's trial and error. You know, you, you eat some things and you got 25 grams of protein, maybe the next time eat a little bit more, you're gonna get 35 grams of protein. That's how you practice it. So we've got a calorie deficit, we've got protein, 
we've got strength training. You know, I'm an advocate for strength training. You don't ever have to love it, but I do think you do need to include it in your life at some point in time to some degree, because if you don't, you will lose strength. And as you get older, that's the last thing you want to lose because you want to go into your later years being able to move, being able to get up off a chair, being able to pick something up off the ground, holding your grandkids, whatever it is, you want to be able to do all that. Strength training is going to ensure that you can do all that for as long as possible. With strength training, we're going to talk about moving every day, and this is vital. You need to walk. I mean, walking, anyone can walk. You can walk in your house, you can walk outside. It doesn't matter where you walk, but try to get movement in every single day. Your heart's going to appreciate it, your joints are going to appreciate it, and your mind is going to appreciate it. It's going to be one of the most healthy things you can do and to help with your weight loss and to help with getting your protein. And, and it's just gonna help with everything. Movement every day is crucial. Calorie deficit, protein, strength training, and movement. That's your magic formula. That's the best diet for women over 50. We need to add two caveats to this diet, and that is consistency, meaning you need to be on top of that at least 80% of the time, if not more. You don't have to be perfect, but 80, 85%, if you can hit your numbers and be consistent with your training and be consistent with your movement, you're gonna see results. Everyone is going to see results. The issue comes up when the consistency factor is not intact. We, we, we think we're being more consistent than we are. Track it, use a calendar, get a monthly calendar out, track every single day that you hit your calories, you hit your protein, you hit your workout or your movement, put a big red X on there or whatever symbol you want to use. Every day that you don't hit one of those, put a big black circle or whatever symbol you want to use. You will get a quick visual right away on how consistent you're actually being. And this is eye-opening for so many people. We think we're being more consistent than we are. I encourage you to try that method with a calendar and see how consistent you are actually being. And I want to address one more thing. I think this is really important to differentiate. The difference between being in a calorie deficit versus being in a calorie deficit mindset. So often people tell me, I have been tracking my calories. I've been hitting my numbers. I've been doing this. I'm not losing weight. And when we talk about it, we start, we start picking it apart a little bit and we start figuring out, well, they are tracking things, but it's getting a little loose on the weekends. They're not tracking maybe the, the licks or the tastes and the bites as much as they thought. And then the weekend comes and it's kind of looser than what they had hoped, that kind of thing. But yet they feel like they're, they're always in a calorie deficit and they're, always, they're, they're not succeeding. Remember, it's one thing to be thinking about being in a deficit all the time. Like you could be going out on the weekend and thinking about, I should be in a deficit, I should be doing this, whatever. Thinking about being in a deficit, but you're not actually in a deficit. I think that's the biggest issue. People are in this deficit mindset. If you're, if you're telling me you've been in a calorie deficit for two years, I'll tell you, no, you haven't been in a calorie deficit for two years. You've been in a calorie deficit mindset for two years. Because let's face it, if you were in a calorie deficit for two years, you'd be losing weight. I mean, there'd be very little left of you probably. The difference between being in the mindset and actually being in a deficit day in and day out, two very, very different things. And becoming aware of that difference can be where things turn around for you. So I put that out there for you to be aware of as well. So let's kind of put this all in the, the, the package of here's the best diet. We talked about calorie deficit. We talked about protein. We talked about strength training. We talked about moving and the importance of consistency, the importance of patience in this process. We probably don't talk about that enough, but we need to be patient with this process. And we also touched on that very important part about being in a calorie deficit mindset versus being in an actual calorie deficit and the difference thereof. To get yourself on track, to fix all of this, those steps definitely. 
But you need to believe that you are in control of this because you are. You, this is the great news here. <laughs> you control everything. The decisions you make will determine your outcome. And that's the best news anyone could ever have. You actually are in control of what happens, whether you're 30 years old or whether you're 60 years old. You control what happens. You add with that all the other things that we talked about and that, that is your diet. That is the best diet for women over 50. And I'm just gonna list them all up here on the screen for you one more time just to make sure you can screenshot this and you have it because this is what will work for you. And I look forward to hearing from you on how this diet works for you and where you are with things. Um, keep me up to date. I wanna know where you are in your weight loss. How's your training going? Let me know because this diet plan and we actually included training as well. This is what's gonna change your life. And whether you're over 50 or under 50, it doesn't matter. This is gonna work for you. So have at it. Make sure you wrote all that stuff down and keep me up to date and let me know how you're doing with this diet for all of us over 50. Go crush it.